Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woki, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. I was gonna get ready to start doing a bunch of work things and not have to worry about making a video. And then I logged into Fago, and then I saw Arjuna Altar was coming up in a upcoming banner and I did not notice that. So yeah, we're gonna be talking about this. <laughs> That's gonna be today's video, I hope you like it. So, summoning campaign. I'm almost uh, like 100% sure that this did not happen on the JP side of the game. Because it's been a known thing that Arjuna Alter did not come back until like after Caldea. It, it took a long time for him to come back. Let me see, just to be sure. Because um, this right belt is the Lost Belt 1 to 4 Memorial Campaign summoning. I don't think this ever happened in the JP side of the game. Not that I could see anything here. I would remember, because I'm telling you right now, so many people were waiting for him to come back, and I don't think he came back on the JP version of the game until, like, sometime close to around here. It took a real long-ass time for him to come back. That's what I remember most. He's maybe the unit that's most been... It might actually be Caldea Boys this year. He might be... No, I don't see him. Either way, I don't remember. Point is, it's supposed to take an extremely long time. He's here now, though. <laughs> and he's going to be here on the 25th. This Lost Belt Memorial Summoning campaign takes place from the 25th to May 7th. And this is going to be celebrating through Lost Belt 1 through 4 with a Memorial Summoning campaign. So who's going to be on it? It's going to be Arjuna Altar. It's going to be Shi Huang Di. It's going to be Valkyrie and Ad Atalanta, who are all representatives for Lost Belts. This is 1, 2, 3, and 4. And this is how the schedule is going to start. They're going to start with Shi Huang. So technically speaking, his banner, which is going to be the one with um, Arjuna Altar, is not until Friday. And he's going to be featured with Valkyrie. So if you're someone who was looking forward to summoning for... Atlanta with her on featured rate up with him. I guess that's not happening. It's only going to be with those two, so plan accordingly. So let's talk about these units. Also, these are going to be the craft essences on rate up, basking under the sunlight. The infinite of Atlas, beyond the horizon, and La Fuela. Doesn't really matter, so <laughs> none of them are crazy. Actually, funny that there is a funny story with the infinite of Atlas because this one I have a free. Uh, they they messed up and they had to do a slight refund. They gave like multiple copies because this wasn't on rate up or something. Either way, that's why I have mine max and limit broken. Because uh, they not only gave it for free, they also gave back some St. Quartz. Which some people were like, well, it should have been a full refund. But it's like, well, they're giving you the actual thing. So, <laughs> if it was a unit, it'd probably be a different story. Only because it's a craft essence, there people are like, whatever, I wanted I wanted the full refund back. But anyway, I digress. We'll start with uh, Shuang Kuang Di over here. Uh, he is a limited servant. He is a ruler class. He's the first emperor. He's the China Mothman. He's the other uh, Mothman, the ruler Mothman. His first skill is all books must be burned, A. Eh? Reduce all enemies' MP gauge by 1, reduces their defense for 3 turns, defense is down 20%, and uh, this is a 100% just ch chance of always hitting. The cooldown is 6, second skill is all scholars must be buried, 70% chance to stun all enemies for 1 turn, increase attack for 3 turns, the attack is 30% up, and 6 turn cooldown. And then his third skill is Eternal, Eternal Throne A, charges on MP gauge, removes on debuffs, and recovers on HP, 50% MP. 3,000 heal and 6 cooldown, 6, uh, six turn cooldown. His only passive skill is Magic Resistance B. His append skill for the third one is an Anti-Assassin, which is funny, which is an increase against uh, Assassin enemies. And then his Noble Phantasm is B+, it is Anti-Barrier. It grants self-invincibility for one turn, draws attention to all enemies and uh, to self by 500% 500, 500 for one turn. Increases on critical damage for three turns, increases on crit star absorption for 300% for three turns, increases on attack for three turns. The attack up is by 50. The crit damage is also 50 at level 1 and 100% uh, at level 5. And then the same thing goes for attack if you get it all the way to overcharge level 5. It is a increase of 100% attack up. So, there you go. 
that's what he is. Uh, he's a very basic kind of ruler. What he does is that he wants to stay alive, and he seems to be very well built for kind of that kind of uh, gameplay. Obviously, some stuff where it's more like challenge based because he has stuff where he can reduce NP gauge, which is very nice to do when you're fighting against a boss enemy. Is that sometimes you just you just need a turn, buy yourself a turn, and that's going to be pretty nice. 70% chance to stun is okay, um, it's not 100%, which kind of sucks, so that means you can't effectively rely on it, especially since a lot of bosses have deep, deep, deep immunity, so 70% of the chance, 70% of the time it's not going to hit a whole bunch, that's just the way I see it. But hey, if you're super lucky, then it'll get hit. And then this is a nice 50% MP charger, and then it heals up. Uh, yeah, I think he's very effective at what he's trying to do, just not a lot of cases of, like, he's definitely not a unit you're going to bring to like the grind fest he's not really built for that he's built for surviving and that's basically it and as long as you're using him for that method i think you're going to be pretty well off he is a ruler so he doesn't really have type advantage but it means that he's also not really uh disadvantaged except for in some very specific matchups so you're going to be fine most of the time but there you go that's the that's uh shi huang di if you have anything else if you're a big uh huang users also forgive me if i'm saying the name wrong it's not on purpose i don't know how to say it um feel free to tell me anything about them okay so i'll look at atlanta altar she has a four star but still she is not limited at all she's just always on banners same thing goes for valkyrie actually she's two quicks one arts two buster berserker class her active skill this eventually changes into demonic habituation um ex which upgrades after an interlude it is an increase in the critical star absorption for one turn gains crit stars increases on critical damage by buster cards for one turn six thousand percent absorption rates 20 crit stars buster damage up buster crit damage specifically is 50 percent up second skill is crossing arcadia a increases party res quick res uh quick performance for one turn 50 percent wild beast logic b grants self evasion for one turn increases on crit damage for three turns 50 percent up in crit damage so, it's a shame she only has two busters, because this combined with that, it's 100% crit damage, which is nice. Passive skill, Beast 4B, increases old buster performance by 8%, increased on crit star generation rate by 8%, independent action A, increased on critical damage by 10%. Her third skill is anti-archer critical attack chance resistance, increased on crit attack chance resistance against archers. And her noble, her noble phantasm is rank A, the arrow that eclipses the somber sky. It's anti-unit. It deals damage to one enemy. It seals their NP. The damage is 12,000 at level 1, and at level 5, it's 2,000. And then also it inflicts curse for 5 turns. At charge level 1, it's 500 curse damage, and if you get it all the way to the final curse damage, it's uh, 2,500. So, hmm... Yes, that is Atlanta Alter. Not really much to say. She's not a limited unit, so it's just kind of a nice unit to have, I guess. You can use her. Again, I've said before, Berserkers without Guts tend to be... Even though she has Evasion, that, that one turn is not going to be enough. In difficult quests, she's really going to just get chewed up for the most part. She doesn't have a lot of protection from anything. But if you're just looking, if you're just here for a fight that's going to end real quick, or you can protect her, like you can use uh, Shuang over there to make sure that they actively avoid her and that she doesn't take any of the damage and stuff like that. Or so if you have a build like that, whatever build you're going to be going for, maybe you can make up for that with also craft essences. But you know, not what I would consider the definitive single target quick berserker. But actually, now that I think about it, what who is the definitive single target quick berserker? I don't know who would that be. So maybe she is fine. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think, boy? Because now you... Sean Ju? Let me see. Berserker quick. Uh, uh, where is... Lancelot's uh, noble is uh, AoE. Yeah, Sean Yu is also AoE. That's what I'm saying. Single target specifically. Single target quick. Is it Say? Is Say really the la the Single tar no. Increase on damage against servants enemies. Mm, say is the, uh, the the newest one. 
Man, there really isn't that much quick single target berserkers. At least in that, not many that have. Oh, is this. No, Hitchcock's Buster. Yeah, I don't know. This is. I've never actually sat down and looked about and thought about the single target specifically for quick busters. There's only three. Okay, so you got slim pickings. <laughs> so really, it's more vigors can't be choosers. If you're looking for a single target uh, berserker quick, you have three choices. You have Mysterious Heroin X Alter. You have Say, who is not out on the North American version of the game, and you have Atlanta Alter. So there you go. Uh, if if that's what specifically what you're looking at, that's all you have. Now let's go to Valkyrie. Uh, Valkyrie is a quick. She's not limited at all. She's the daughter of the great god. She has two quick arts, one arts, two buster. Her first skill is primeval rune. Increase on quick performance for three turns. Increase on MP damage for three turns. The quick up is 30% and the MP damage is 20%. Second skill, Suavnit Swan Mystic Code. Grant self evasion for one attack, three turns. Grant self debut of immunity for one time, three turns. Do some attack damage taken for three attacks, three turns. Damage taken down is a thousand, six turns. Third skill is Fate Weaver B, charges on MP gauge every turn for three turns, increases on HP every turn for three turns, Great gains crit stars every turn for three turns, 10% MP regen, 1000 uh, HP regen, star regen is 10, Magic Resistance B, Divinity A is her passive skills, her third append skill is a anti-rider attack damage aptitude, which is increased damage against riders. And her noble phantasm is the Ragnarok Lifbrisir, or Final Phantasm Girl's Advent. Seven hits, quick AoE, ignores evasion for one turn, activates first, deals damage to all enemies. At level one, it's six thousand. It's six hundred percent. At level five, it's one thousand. Chance to instant kill demonic enemies. Charges one thousand. Uh, charge level one, it's fifty percent chance. If you get it all the way to charge level five, it's a one hundred percent death rate. Okay, Valkyrie. So Valkyrie is actually one of the best quick uh, lancer. For grinding, I think the only one that is better is Parvati, who Parvati is just insane with how much NP generation rate is goes up. I want to say it's between her and Valkyrie for who is the best at that point. I unfortunately have never been able to pull Valkyrie, which is a shame because I really wanted to use him for quick grinding for when I was in the crazy quick meta for it. Uh, kind of a shame, but you can definitely still use them for that. They seem to be perfectly fine They were definitely one of the better quick grinders from back in the day And I think you can still use them for that and it's gonna be no real issue I don't know what specifically about them seems to be doing Maybe it's just because they hit just enough They have the bonus of being able to increase their MP gauge and maybe their rate up is just that good But for whatever reason I remember she's one of the best ones and the same thing can be said for Parvati. So if you have one of those two, chances are if you have Parvati, I would probably lean more towards Parvati because that's the one I use the most. So maybe I'm biased on that. But Valkyrie is also insanely good from what I can remember. So something to keep in mind. So there you go. That's Valkyrie. Definitely a good unit. Definitely worth having. Kind of a shame I've never been able to pull her. Out of all the cards I've pulled and not... I've actually got Liz to NP5 most recently. And she's Lancer. I would have much preferred Valkyrie. Anyway, messed up, but it's the truth. Final, the limited servant. This is the big boy. Everyone loves everyone's favorite Arjuna Alter. He is insane. I shouldn't even really need to say his skills. There's no reason for me to say his skills. How many times can you just say, this guy's fucking good? That's all you need to know. I'm not even going to read his skills. I'm not going to say, he has guts. There you go. Everything I said about the Berserker class suffering from, he doesn't do anything. His Noble Phantasm, it's AoE. It does about as much damage as most <laughs> units do in a single target. It's insane. It reduces their buster resistance. This man is a god. He's one of the greatest. He's the definition of why did they build him like this. This is stupid. Most games would call this power creep. This game calls it as lore accurate. He's good. He's insanely good. He is good. There is nothing really more I can say about this other than he's really good. But now here's the question that has to be answered. Are you going to be summoning for him over someone like Morgan, Oberon, Vich, one of the summer units? And the answer is... Yeah, the answer is maybe. Because he really is that good. Um, and it has to come down to scarcity at the same time. Again, you have to make the decisions for you. 
if you're someone who's like knee deep into the saving and you already had plans for Arjuna Altar in the future, I still think he's going to show up in the future. This is here specifically to make NA people summon. The only reason they would release him now when everyone is waiting for Morgan and everyone's waiting for... And even then, you shouldn't summon for Morgan because Morgan gets a banner later. <laughs> that is... It's crazy. She gets a rerun very quickly, so there's absolutely no reason for you to summon on her first banner. This man is here for one reason and one reason only, and he is here to take your sync cords. And if you're willing to go to gamble, if you're willing to look at your supply and say some of this supply could be used for Arjuna Alter, that's up to you. I can't make that decision for you. What I can tell you is that he's extremely good. Some He's still used to this day. One of the best uh, AoE Berserkers for Buster. I will say on the JP version of the game, eventually a lot of JP people started preferring Morgan. I can't tell if it's because of the gameplay she does because of being giving overcharge is actually an extremely busted effect. They seem to be more wanting to have... I think their MP setup was like, a lot of events would give you 50% starting NP CEs. So you would just give units that, and then a lot of the units you would use would be natural 50% MP chargers. And then Morgan would just buff up their um, Noble Phantasms with her Noble Phantasm, and then it would create a loop where you could easily just... You didn't need the loop, because all their they just did so much damage that it didn't matter. You just had uh, three unit Berserkers, and they were able to just kind of wreck shop from there. But anyway, eventually people on JP would have preferred her over Arjuna Alter, but I don't know if that's going to be the same over here for NA, and I don't know specifically if it was a widespread thing. All I know is that he's good. If you're going for him, it's a good it's a good move. But again, I advise you to think clearly, be calm, don't go crazy. If you're someone who badly wanted Morgan and you're just someone who's like, well, he's Arjuna Alter and I kind of want to summon him for that, I would say maybe it's best to hold off at that point. If you really care more about any of the other ones, then you can continue saving. And if you're someone who just doesn't care about any of these and they're just waiting for, I don't know, someone in the future, then continue to do that, I guess. But yeah, he's insanely good. And it's crazy that he's coming out this early for us. At least, again, like I said, he doesn't come out very often. <laughs> he, do he does not show up very often. He is going to be here in, I think, another year or so, but just know that it's a long wait. And I don't know when he's going to be coming back. I don't think he's been rerun since that other rerun in JP. So, yeah. Good luck to you. But yeah, that's today's video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Also, he eventually gets this costume. Cat. Look at that. Great. He gets two costumes. That's right. Window. Closer window. Most pe Oh, yeah. This is with glasses. Road to seven. There you go. But yeah, that's it for this video, everyone. I wish you guys the best of luck if you're summoning. I'm not summoning. I, I'm really positive I'm not summoning anyway. But until next time, I wish you guys the best of luck. I'm going to go get ready, get ready for work. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Good luck.